I've come to a place where they really do dot the I's and cross the T's. They put the world's finest red dots here at Zeiss into their reticles. The last time we were here at the Zeiss factory in Wetzlar, we were looking at the production of the Duralit rifle scope. That was six years ago. This time we are here to find out as much as they'll allow us about the finest red dot illuminated reticle in the industry. And again, that means funny clothing. Yes, but like I said, you look very, very dashing. Thank you very much. <laughs> very kind of you to say. What does this glass box do? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is where we're creating the world's finest illumination right here, Charlie. We're actually taking this very fine reticle. You can oh, see how super really fine sweet, that yeah. is. It's actually two micrometers, which is two thousandths of a millimeter. Super, super fine. That's the that's tolerance on the machine that makes it. Yes, it is. That's right. And so what's happening in this process here is we're taking the reticle and it's being put into this retaining clip. What kind of metal is this? It's a... Uh, it's a metal. It's a metal. <laughs> it's a foil type metal. You're not going to tell me, are I'm you? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> this would make a really great kind of a Deerstalker's monocle, wouldn't it? Hey, Charlie, don't show that. That's our next prototype oh, project. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what do we do with this? Uh, well, how do we get yeah. the red the red dot into this? Sure, let me show you that. This cool. is really cool. You got to see this process okay. over here. We're actually gluing a glass fiber down the thinnest part of this reticle. Super, super fine. Look, it works like this. You've got the top reticle, and you glue that fiber down the middle, and the red dot comes out of the middle just there. Is that right? Yeah, right at the center of the cross here is where it will end. So I can show you the hair here. This is a human hair, and this yeah. is actually the fiber there. So you can see yeah. how much thinner that is than a human hair. You know, we have to make sure that it's glued in the proper place, yep. and also we have to make sure that we cut it and polish it. It has to be cut at an angle so that the light reflects back to the user. And uh, that the cutting and polishing is done right here on this machine. We simply clamp this in here, and it goes up and it cuts it off and polishes it to a crystal clear transmission type device. There's so much could go wrong with this. How, how do you know that that red light is right? I'm glad you asked that as well. And that's done right here on this machine as well. The screen light here means that that is working properly. The, it's cut and polished and the light is transmitting right through the, the glass fiber perfectly. Excellent. So this, this will go into the next process now. Okay, and what is that next process? Yes, yeah, let's go over here. This is really cool. We're <laughs> going to show you how to build a uh, illumination system. Excellent. So this is where that reticle that we just saw being assembled is eventually going to end up. And this is the... Uh... Is it the bit that goes inside the scope? Yes. You, you can, I can see where you can kind of twist it to yep. get... Is that magnification or, or focus? This is exactly what it is, Charlie. Okay. This is basically a tube inside of a tube is what it is. This sets inside the, the tube, and when you would make your adjustments up or down, or left or right, this is what you're moving. Okay. And then when you're changing magnification, this is what's sliding back and forth to bring it into focus as you go up in power and down in power. So where does it go from here? Yeah, so Charlie, once the, she starts the uh, production of the erector tube, it goes all the way down through here. They're getting to the final production of the erector tube. They're coming around here. Now they're starting to add the uh, oculars on, the objectives on, the lenses and so forth. And then it comes to here where all the electronics are put in. It's beginning to look a lot like a scope yes. now, isn't it? When it gets here, it looks really like a scope. So There's a lot of people working here. How many people work in this, this, this bit alone? Just in the rifle scope cell here is 50 people. 50 people. And I mean, why don't you move production to China? Why don't you make the whole thing? Oh, cheaper? no, 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 no. This is German hand-built product, only in Germany here. OK, take me, take me to the end. What do you actually end up with? Yes, here we have a piece of finest uh, rifle scope in the world, our Victory V8. OK, I'd like to see this, this, this kind of thing in action. Is there, is there anywhere we could go and try this red dot out? Let's go down in the hole and give her a shot. OK, let's go. It must be a really fun office to work in. It really is. It's the kind of office where, I don't know, you could so easily just find lying around a wild ball. You certainly could. You saw the red dot on the board down there. And Charlie, one really cool thing about this that I told you the whole time is it's the finest illumination in the world. That dot on that target, super, super small target coverage. So it, you're able to see a target and, and make the shot as well. And what's super cool, now that we have the scope all together, is I can tell you how this illumination system works. So this is our new intelligence switch. You simply turn it on and off by the button here, dim your, your, your brightness level up or down. So your red light goes on there, and, and you can change the brightness. Yep, you can change it up or down. And then what's really cool about this is the intelligence switch that we have in here. If you turn your rifle 45 degrees in either direction, or up or down, the light goes off. This is our energy conservation system. Okay, that's yes. good. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. So I get that. at rest, it's off. You pick it up, shoulder the rifle, the 
the light comes back on and you're able to see. So you're conserving battery power and so forth. Now, if you don't like that, you can deactivate this system as well and have a manual on and off simply by holding the scope upside down, holding the button on for five seconds, and that goes away. But then now you're stuck to manually turning it on or off. It also means that if you're storing a rifle upright like that, you don't have to remember to wake up in the middle of the night and turn it off. Exactly. Good, 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 good thing. We've seen the scope being made and the technology involved, but what about the history? With Zeiss, there's always history. This is the world of reticles according to Charlie. This is your original wire reticle, like putting a paperclip in the middle of your scope, but it's what we all used in the 1970s. Move forward to the 1980s and we've got the glass reticle, that's pretty common. And then after that came the super etched reticle. This is one of the finest reticles of its time, but when the red dot came along, we had to move back to the glass reticle, a slightly better one. Now, fast forward to today, and we have the foil reticle. This is an object of great beauty. It's a special metal, we're not allowed to know what it is, but the illuminated dot goes down the top bar here and pokes out the middle at a 45 degree angle and gives you that beautiful red crispy circle. Interestingly, that red crispy circle was given a boost back in the day when the red dot was banned, but all that did was secure its future. The red dot reticle was banned for about one year in the early 90s um, because the government said that is not an ethical hunting and, and there were some misunderstandings about the function of the red dot. Well, it was for the hunting, it was uh, the best marketing ever because for one year everybody was talking about it and afterwards all the hunters knew the technology, knew what is the advantage and therefore the boom really took off in, in Germany and over the last almost 30 years or more than 30 years now, the uh, illuminated reticle is the only one you sell. Cut to today and Zeiss as a company with many departments can tap into some of the best scientific minds in the business. Coming together as the innovation board, this is brainstorming at a very high level. Zeiss's red dot was one part of some blue sky thinking. We have the different business units like the microscopy, like the semiconductor business and industrial uh, measurement technology and all these teams come together in an innovation board and if somebody has a solution or has a question or need, is looking for technologies, you can bring that up into this innovation board. Then the other um, business units start to think about and maybe out of the other business units, like in, in the Red Dots situation, come up with a solution. And today, the idea was that we wanted to have the finest red dot in the world. Smaller than everybody else, brighter than everybody else, and also um, when you shoot on the long distance shot, that the coverage on the target is as small as possible. I hope that explains the work that goes into creating something that is fast becoming an industry standard, an illuminated red dot reticle. But Zeiss produces the finest in the world.